Hello friends, welcome back to the Carolina Farmhouse. I can't believe it's already been a year since we did a seed haul. I think in my last seed haul video, I was sitting next to the cozy fire. <laughs> and this year, it's actually not even that cold right now. Um, it definitely feels like a fall spring is happening around here. This is mid-February. I thought better late than ever to get my seed haul video recorded. I love to look back on these and see what varieties I was growing. And I'm really hoping this year to do a better job of documenting. I watched a YouTube video the other day that she walked you through what flowers she grew. And so she had all of her flower seeds kind of like I do here. And she would take you out in her garden like mid-June and show you what they actually looked like. And I really want to do one of those this year. So you guys hold me to that and be like, Courtney, you haven't recorded your video yet. Because once I get into the hustle and bustle of springtime and things being active outside, I tend to forget whatever ideas I had in the wintertime of YouTube videos. One thing that is really exciting this year is I'm actually going to be growing my produce and flowers and selling them here locally at my friend Andrew's store. His store is called Pendleton Farms. It's in Abbeville and it's in the square in Abbeville. So it's very centrally located if you ever visit Abbeville, South Carolina. And I'm just so excited because not only am I getting to live out a little bit of a dream in farming small scale, I'm just excited that things that are grown with my hand here on our property can be shared with you all if you live here locally. So be on the lookout for that. I will be updating probably on my Instagram more every week what I'm gonna be bringing into the store. So like whatever I'm harvesting, I will bring that in and share so that you kind of know because I know a lot of you live an hour, hour and a half from Abbeville and you might wanna make the commute one weekend and get some flowers and produce that we have grown. And because of that, I feel like I needed to upgrade my gardening journal. So I did that this year. I don't know if y'all remember on Instagram me sharing my original garden journal. It had cows on the front, of course, but I literally had like seed tags duct taped in there. It was not very fancy. And the cats ended up peeing on it so I had to get a new one and I just got this one off of Amazon. I'll link it, but it's just, it's not a garden journal. It's literally just like a lined notebook. And so I went through and just taped in the pieces I had already filled out in my other journal, the ones that didn't have cat pee on them. And I saved, let me show you how I did. One of you sent me double-sided tape because you saw me duct taping into my journal. And I used that, so thank you to whoever sent that to my P.O. box because double-sided tape just made my tags look so nice in there. Look how pretty that looks. Those are my peach trees. So, since I am growing for Andrew's store this year, I figured I needed to get my booty in gear a little bit more this year and figure out what I was growing, how I'm going to lay it out in my garden, and so I did a sketch. I did a sketch here of my garden and kind of a rough outline of what I'm gonna grow. Elliot and I also added a whole new separate section. I don't know if you can really see right there. This is like the garden gate and normally my rows stop right here, but we added a whole path down here for us to grow extra flowers because I had so much fun cutting sunflowers and I'm really looking forward to selling those to you guys this year. So anyway, let's get started on some of the seed varieties that I'm gonna be growing. So I've been keeping my seeds in one of these <laughs> photo organizers. You can get them off of Amazon. I'll link the one I got. I got the colorful one just to add a little pizzazz, but they just come in the, with these little compartments that you put photos in. And so I just, I just use a marker to write whatever type of plant it is. So that should make it a little bit easier for me to break this down because I already have them sorted into categories. So let's start with tomatoes, my favorite. I remember last year when I killed all of my seedlings by not hardening them off. I'm not gonna make that mistake again this year. All right, the first one is a cherry tomato variety and it's Evil Olive. I'll put a picture up so that you can see what it looks like. My goal this year is to grow the varieties that are tried and true for me that I love, but also to grow unique types of tomatoes that you can't just find at the grocery store 
you know, here locally so that people have an incentive to buy my produce from Pendleton Farms and it's not just the same thing they'd find here locally. So, the Evil All Over are kind of a unique color. I'm doing True Black Brandy Wine. It just is an heirloom, has really pretty color. I have not done this variety before, but I'm excited to try it. I know Brandy Wine is a pretty common type of tomato. This is a favorite, the Black Cherry Surprise Me. You guys know how much I loved the Lucky Tiger Cherry Tomatoes. I felt like the flavor was matched, if not surpassed, by black cherry. So I believe I got two packets, and I'm going to grow a lot of these. Rebecca Allen, they had this variety back. Remember last year when I shared that I could not find Rebecca Allen tomatoes? One of y'all sent me some of your Rebecca Allen seeds. So I was able to grow, I think two of those plants survived from the great tomato fiasco of last year. And so I was able to at least, at least get a couple of slicing tomatoes from that. And they were so good. So Baker Creek had these in stock. So I'm growing those again. I'm sorry if I'm sniffly. There's something pollen wise that's going on that is just making my nose run constantly. Um, I'll try to edit out all my sniffles. But the Berkeley tie dye pink, I thought that was a really unique looking tomato. So we're going to give it a try. Da -da -da, the Lucky Tiger, one of my favorites. It's a large elongated cherry tomato. So it's not like a little cherry tomato, but I love the color and I love the flavor of them. I'm not a huge sweet tomato person. I love, I don't know if it's just like a Southern thing, but like I grew up on tomatoes that are just like so acidic and those are just my favorite. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these varieties for yourself that I really like a classic acidic flavored tomato. Here's an Amish paste. I'm not sure that I'm growing that one. Another Lucky Tiger. I gotta be honest. Last year I grew paste tomatoes. I grew Roma and I grew the Amish paste and I'd heard like so many people grow them for canning because they don't have as much liquid in them so that you get like a thicker sauce when you use them. And there were high producers. I got a ton. I did not like the flavor of paste tomatoes. I don't know if it's something I did wrong. <laughs> But, like I was saying, I love flavorful tomatoes, including when I can them, um, because I feel like you can tell difference. If I'm using them in spaghetti, I don't want it to taste like tomato puree that's just like blah. Like, I want it to be flavorful tomatoes. So, I was not, I was not impressed with paste tomatoes. If you guys have any varieties that have better flavor than the Roma and Amish paste. It was just, Elliot and I even sliced some and put salt and ate them and we both were like, we do not like these. The, the texture of them was mushy. It was kind of grainy and it didn't have any taste. It literally was kind of tomato water with salt. It was just not my vibe. Cherokee purples did really well for me last year and I just, I think they're so pretty. So I'm definitely growing those. There's another black cherry. All right, last year I shared some of this on Instagram, the mushroom basket. To me, this is the prettiest tomato with the little um, scalloped edges. When you slice it, it looks like a flower. And I was really surprised at the flavor that these had because they, they weren't just looks, they had substance. Um, I'm doing more Abe Lincoln. I've grown these for probably three years and they're just massive slicer tomatoes. And to me, the flavor is just very good. There's another Roma tomato, I won't be growing that. This is a, I don't know how you say it, but it's an art color mix of cherry tomatoes. I think those are really pretty. I've had this seed packet for a while. I think this was in one of my first Baker Creek things, but I found my seeds once we moved here, so I wanted to grow those. Another Abe Lincoln, so that covers the tomatoes. Next up, I have already planted some of this cabbage. It's the glory of I don't even know how to say that. Um, and I've got some collard greens, Georgia Southern collard greens. These have more heat tolerance. And then I also planted, ooh, the seeds are all in here. Um, I planted a purple cabbage. So those are already, <coughs> so those are already planted in my garden currently. Let's move on to beans. I got these from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. And aren't those just the prettiest seed packets you've ever seen. I'm in love with it. Um, they also have really good instructions on the back, which is nice. But these are the Thoroughgreen Bush Beans. So they're lima, a lima bean. I also got some of these purple, 
purple beans. Um, Cantair, gosh, I feel like whenever I say names, I'm just exposing my southernness even more because when I try to say things correctly, I sound even more like a backwoods hick. <laughs> So, Cantair beans, these are, are these a bush bean? Yeah, these are a bush green bean. So, I did these to save trellis space. I've also got the, Lan the Landreth stringless beans that I grew last year. And these just did not produce a lot. I'm not super thrilled. But the Purple Hole Pink Eyed Cow <laughs> That is a mouthful. The Purple Hole Pink Eyed Cow Peas, they did really great. And I have a whole jar. Let me show you. These are, I didn't eat any of them last year, but I saved all of these from last year because we couldn't have any beans on the GAPS diet. But I mean, I'm Southern, I love black eyed peas. So I knew I wanted to save them for seed. So they're just so pretty. So I'm definitely gonna grow those this year and hopefully have enough to sell in Andrew's store. I also did the, these runner beans last year. I was not very impressed. They had a couple of really pretty red flowers and then it was just like single pods and it didn't produce. I don't know if it was just the heat or what. So those were not like a top bean for me. Next, cucumbers. I feel like every time I move, I rattle you. I'm really hoping that this turns out okay. All right, for cucumbers, pretty simple. Absolutely loved the cucumelons. I love the flavor. We like them smaller than like quarter size. So I'm gonna be growing these for us and to sell, as well as the Boston pickling cucumbers, my number one go-to. It's just the, the perfect cucumber flavor. Um, it's like crunchy and it just has that flavor that I'm wanting. Um, I also ordered Bay at Alpha. They're more of like an English looking cucumber. Um, but I just wanted to have another variety to offer customers this year. So that's all for the cucumbers. Let's do squash. Here are random seed packets. I saved these from a green pumpkin my father-in-law gave me. I saved, no, these are from the green pumpkin. I saved these from a butternut squash at Thanksgiving. And I'm going to try to just grow those probably out in a shaded area in the woods because squash are not that picky. I'm gonna grow lemon squash. I thought that these were so cute and unique and something that you don't find at the grocery store a lot. And then I've got typical zucchini and the crookneck early golden summer squash. Um, the zucchini variety is the black beauty and then those are the crookneck. Also, I got a smaller, more interesting, colorful green uh, squash that is a nimba zucchini so this year i am upping my flower planting because last year my squash and zucchini plants looked amazing they didn't have any squash bugs they didn't have any powdery mildew they were huge and green but they did not produce like anything i think we probably got like a handful of squash and if if you've grown that, you know that that becomes the bane of your existence. Like a squash plant just grows so much that you're sick of eating it by the end of the season. And I remember we went to the beach for a week and came back and I expected to have like huge squash and zucchini. There was not a single one on there. So I think I didn't have enough pollinators possibly. Worst comes to worst, I guess I gotta rub the flowers together. That just feels kind of invasive to me. So I'm hoping by planting a lot of um, perennial pollinator plants in the front of my garden that it will attract more bees and hopefully help with any of those kind of issues in this coming spring. All right, next up is my second favorite category, which is peppers. I'm going to do purple beauty bell peppers. I just love a dark bell pepper. I don't know. I just, it's wonderful. I have not grown that variety. I grew the Zulu black peppers last year and they were really good. They were back in stock with my black peppers. These are my favorite. I, The flavor, I mean, it's a bell pepper. It's nothing just like blow your socks off, but the coloring of these peppers is just so unique and beautiful. So I got three packs of these because last year they were out of them. So now I have them in stock. Bullnose pepper, just a basic bell pepper. 
Craig's Grande Jalapeno. I got two of those because these are my favorite jalapenos. They have such good flavor and they're a good size. So I love to do pickling jalapenos or I guess pickled jalapenos. I have a tutorial on how I do it. You don't have to have a canner or anything. Basically boiling them, heating up your jars, and then it seals itself. I love putting those on tacos, nachos, things like that. Here are the Zulu peppers, another dark variety that I grew last year, and then bull nose. So those are the peppers. Something new that I'm trying this year is growing okra. And from what I've heard, okra is very simple to grow so my feelings are going to be hurt if it doesn't do well this first year because i've heard like the soil doesn't even have to be good you can't go wrong with okra watch me go wrong with okra because if anybody could do it i could but i got the hill country red okra i've heard good things about that i got the clemson spineless um this originated in clemson so you know i had to be getting that because that's my husband's alma mater and that's another pretty seed packet from the Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. So that's the Clemson one. I got Heavy Hitter Okra. There was another one that was from South Carolina that I got. It might be this one. Two different varieties that I read about were developed in upstate South Carolina. So the Heavy Hitter and then I got the Burgundy Okra. I thought it was just really pretty. So I'm excited to grow those and we will just go on that journey together this year to see if I can grow okra. I'm also growing the same varieties of lettuce. I already have them out there planted that I did last year. Let's see which ones I grew. I have the slow bolt cilantro out there. That's not a lettuce that should be in my herb, but I love the forellenschlus. I love spotted lettuces that have color. I love the rocky top lettuce. It's a really good kind of spring mix variety. I love the Merlot. Grew the Bloomsdale Long Standing Spinach. I like the Long Standing because it handles hot temperatures a little bit better than most spinach and my lettuce bolts in like the end of April because it gets so hot. All right, let's talk about herbs. So one of the flower videos that I was looking at for pollinators said that hyssop was a really good seed to grow and it has beautiful purple flowers. And I had already purchased these seeds a couple years ago. So I was like, I have that. The regular mamalo basil. I have lemon balm. Some of these are already returning in my planters that I have out there. Also bee balm, wild bergamot. Um, I'm growing that as a pollinator attractor, but also something really pretty. I have thyme. Again, the slow boat cilantro. I moved this to its correct um, package. Let's see what else. I think that's all that I'm growing of that. I do have a couple of basils that I've purchased that have not been delivered yet. But Elliot and I, with growing flowers this year to sell at Andrew's store, I wanted a lot of different colored fillers and I've heard that basil is a really cool filler because it's aromatic and if you get the different colored ones, it just looks really pretty. So the cardinal basil is one of those that I'm going to be growing as a floral filler. And then also white yarrow I will be growing as actual flowers. So that leads me into our next category, which is this entire basket of flower seeds. Okay, so you guys know how much Elliot loves flowers. She's always had a little Cosmos and Zinnia flower garden. She had one at her last house. She's had one here. That was mainly just to keep her from cutting all of my ornamental flowers because she loves picking flowers and bouquets. But this year, like I told you earlier, I'm adding onto my garden space to grow a lot more flowers to sell bouquets at Pendleton Farms. I'm so excited. So I thought I'd show you some of the varieties that I'm growing. Some of these are going to be for bouquets and then some of them are going to be in the perennial bed in front of my garden. So I got these cherry rose sunflowers. I thought they were gorgeous. I love, I love yellow sunflowers, but I love like different varieties that are darker. I just think they're so interesting. So I got like five or six packs of those to grow. I have some super giant cactus zinnia seeds. Let's see, I'm gonna separate out the ones for the cut flower and then the ones for 
the bed. I got some Gonfrina for flower arrangements. I got the purple. I've never grown flowers from seed, so I'm a little nervous. I hope I don't mess it up, but it's I'm really excited about it. Okay, so this is yarrow berries flower seeds. So that's some yarrow. I got black eyed Susans. I got Shasta daisies. These are from in my gardener. This one and the St. John's fire salvia. Salvia are really good for hummingbirds. I planted some blue salvia in, I don't know if y'all remember when I pressure washed that brick patio that we didn't even know was under the grass and I planted those pollinator beds. I did blue salvia because I heard, <laughs> this is really random, but I was watching a reel on Instagram and it's that guy who's always talking about like Southern, Southern culture, casseroles, all these things and it's like a joke. I cannot remember his name right now. But he was talking about hummingbirds in the south and how they're like a staple and if you're hummingbird rich you're something in the south and i thought it was hilarious because it's so true because people who get into hummingbirds here it's like if they have multiple hummingbird feeders tens to a dozen hummingbirds showed up their house they are something in the south so your girl's trying to be something big in the south with my hummingbirds so i planted the blue salvia there if I have this red salvia in front of my garden, watch out. My head's gonna get so big because I will be hummingbird rich. All right, the Calias, I think is how you say it. Calias. This is a pretty filler that I'm gonna do in the front beds. It's not quite as tall as some of the varieties. And I thought the, the leaves were just a really beautiful color. All right, Mexican sunflowers. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put these, but in that video where the lady showed you from seed to plant um, with her flowers. She showed a Mexican sunflower. I'm gonna uh, link that video below and you can go to her channel. I believe she might be Crazy Daisy or Southern Daisy. Anyway, I love her videos and she's talked about the Mexican sunflower and just how big and beautiful it is. So she said the flowers aren't the best for cutting, but it's amazing for birds and pollinators and butterflies. So I'm gonna find somewhere in my garden that I can just plant it and just let it go. I got three of these packs of Crazy Blend Sunflowers. I think I grew one of these last year and it had a really cool variety. So I got three of those. And then I got this whole big bag of Crazy Cosmos mix. Can't go wrong with Cosmos. And then I got this pack of four clocks. This is for the pollinator bed and not for cutting. And that same flower video for four clocks looks so pretty. So I really wanna try it. So that's the majority of my flower blends. I have a couple more that are kind of delayed in shipping and should be here. But that covers the majority of what I'm excited to grow from seed this year. I would love to hear any varieties that you're growing, what you're excited about this year. If you have any tips for me for any of the varieties I talked about, y'all know I am always open to hearing tips and tricks for growing things because I love gardening, I love growing from seed but I'm still so new to a lot of things, I can use all the help I can get. So, I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I'm so excited that spring is almost here. It's the best time of the year, y'all, and I hope that you're just clutching your little seed packets like I am, holding you over until it's time for planting. Y'all have a great day.